Cutting a hole in a roof, it's a serious matter that cannot be undervalued. That's why RCS set out to design the simplest, most effective roof curb system in the industry for weather tightness and structural integrity. This training tutorial highlights the installation of the RCS track rail and seam in roof curb system. We begin with the erector installing the roof sheeting as specified by the building manufacturer and in accordance with guidelines specified by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. When the curb location is reached in the roof sheeting process, the installation is placed as normal. The supplied track rail is then laid down with each of the sliders positioned accordingly on the purlins, based on the dimensions of the curb and aligned in the flat of the roof panels, coordinating with the panel modulation. Adjacent side channel supports are supplemented for seam in roof curbs and both are placed parallel to the track rail, so their position is offset to support the panel curb connection. The two longer cross channel members are factory notched to the width of the curb flanges and are placed at the down slope flange and the up slope flange to be used as backer plates for fasteners at the curb panel lap. The shorter factory notched cross channel is to be placed under the diverter or within the curb opening, depending on equipment clearances to terminate the insulation. The track rail system can also be pre-assembled with the factory notched cross channels and a few flathead fasteners for easier placement if the installer has enough work area. When the track rail has been positioned in the desired location, the installer then places four fasteners in the factory drilled holes in each of the sliders into the purlins. The insulation can then be scored and removed from the facing within the opening of the curb. It's recommended to cut an X into the remaining insulation facing and pull it back over the track rail and cross channels onto a strip of common double-faced tape. The roof sheeting process can now continue, and the seam and roof curb can be installed now or in the future, depending on the building schedule. For this tutorial, we will install the roof curb in conjunction with the roof sheeting process. Let's begin by dry fitting the curb onto the installed track rail with the diverter oriented in the upslope and aligned with the adjacent roof panel seam. The downslope roof panels can now be measured and field cut to the correct lengths, allowing a three to five and a half inch lap across the entire width of the curb flange and integrated rib cap. After the corresponding downslope roof panels are installed according to manufacturer specifications, the seams should be hand crimped to the finishing phase condition where they will be lapped under the downslope curb flange. A row of RCS 7 bead mastic spanning the entire width of the curb flange should then be placed on the roof panels where the lap condition exists and caulk supplemented on the roof panel high ribs to prevent gaps at the built up connections. If the lap of the downslope curb flange and the roof panels is greater than 3 inches, it is recommended to apply an additional row of RCS 7 bead mastic adjacent to the outside mastic band to form a 6-inch wide band of mastic, preventing fasteners from missing the mastic field. The curb can now be set and the supplied fasteners installed along the downslope end into the roof panels and track rail cross channel at 3 inches on center. The upslope roof panels can now be measured and field cut to the approximate length so their lap corresponds 3 inches with the integrated high rib plugs and factory notch seam edges of the roof curb flange. A band of RCS 7 bead mastic should be applied across the entire width of the upslope flange where the roof panel laps over. Additional caulk should be installed over the integrated high rib plugs along with minor rib tape dependent upon roof panel type to ensure a weather tight seal before placing the roof panels onto the mastic band. The upslope roof panels can now be installed in accordance with manufacturer specifications and the roof panel curb lap screwed off 3 inches on center for the entire width of the curb flange. The roof sheeting process can resume, and after the roof panel run adjacent to the curb is complete, the seam caps can be prepped for installation. Before applying any mastic or sealant to the seam caps, hand crimp the adjacent roof panel high rib seams to the finished phase condition at the corners of the curb flanges where the seam caps will integrate with the roof panels. The seam caps require one and a half inch mastic applied to the interior of the lower flange sections the entire length of the seam caps and opposite of each interior side. A generous bead of caulk should be placed on each end of the seam caps prior to placement, which should overlap a minimum of six inches from the ends of the curb. The provided stitch screws should be installed six inches on center through the mastic on both sides of the seam caps for their entire lengths. Please note that the overuse of sealants in this tutorial is done to illustrate the importance of compression between the roof panels and curb when coupled with properly tightened fasteners. The seam in roof curb system by RCS is now complete and the work area surrounding the curb assembly should be swept or vacuumed to remove debris and metal shavings from the roof. Revolutionizing the industry since the 1990s, Roof Curb Systems listens to erectors, manufacturers, designers, and contractors to continually develop innovative solutions with a total systems approach to the most critical components in metal buildings, RCS.